It's never too early to start thinking about gifts. And whether it's for a friend or the friend in your pants, you can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor. Use that lawnmower <laughs> 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking all I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about his sack. So should you look nice when it's time to get naughty. Go to Manscaped. Use the promo code Jim Ross for free shipping and 20% off. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. The Platinum Package has each product from their best-selling performance package, but it's also got the Ultra Premium Body Wash, the Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, and the Ultra Premium Deodorant. Of course, you're still going to be rocking that Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. Both are going to take care of you with their proprietary advanced skin safe technology. These rascals have a 4,000K LED light on it. It's going to help you uh, light the way like Rudolph. You've also got your shower game leveled up in the Platinum Package. All the products are sulfate-free, vegan, made to have you feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Doesn't just stop at the shower, though. They got ball deodorant and ball toner. They call them the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver. The Platinum Package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed put anyone in the holiday spirit. How about this for a stocking stuffer? They got a brand new body buffer. So you get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Jim Ross at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code Jim Ross. Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. We thank manscaped.com for sponsoring today's program. Use that code Jim Ross at manscaped.com. Can you believe it? It's finally here. It's the most wonderful time of the year, unless you get stressed out about how to pay for it. Savewithconrad.com can help you make this the best Christmas ever. You won't make a house payment for the next two months. That's right. Skip your next two house payments and use all that cash for your extra holiday expenses. And come next year, you're going to have a lower monthly payment. Don't put Christmas on a credit card. Pay your credit card debt off at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Savewithconrad.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Grillin' JR with the voice of wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Jim, how are you, man? I'm busier than a fruit merchant, Conrad, but uh, I'm good. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody that celebrates. It's uh, pretty cool to be coming to you today on Thanksgiving, and we're excited to be with you. Thank you for welcoming us in and making us a part of your holiday. And hope everyone enjoyed a great turkey day with their fam and a heck of a dynamite last night. We're on the heels of a pretty big time AEW pay-per-view. Got a lot of new champions running around here. Jamie Hayter is the new women's champion, but maybe what everybody's talking about. MJF is the new world champ. Yeah. I was, I was pulling for Mox. I don't like MJF. He's a terrible human being. It's not <laughs> a quote, unquote, gimmick. He's just awful. He's not the salt of the earth. He's a turd. And unfortunately that turd now has 10 pounds of gold around his waist. Actually, that belt's so big. Maybe it's like the 30 pounds of gold. Either way, MJF is the man. Quite a show, man. What'd you think? I enjoyed it. You know, I, Tony Khan wanted me to work the first six matches and I did. Uh, and then I, uh, was done and I'd like to have worked the, uh, last match, you know, obviously as a fan, and as a broadcaster, uh, certainly I like you, I'm a big fan of John Moxley, uh, and, but I was kind of thinking it was going to be MJF night. This seemed like it was time. Uh, we'll see how that works out. I hope it works out great. We'll see, we, you know, if uh, MJF's got to take ownership of the championship and be uh, that great leader that we need him to be, uh, he, he is, as you see, he looked great. He was in great shape or the best shape he's ever been in. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, it was, it was interesting in that respect. I thought they had a, Solid match. I watched the match back on my iPad because I went back to the hotel when I was finished with my assignment and I got there in time to watch kind of double dipped. I watched uh, the last quarter of the Medellin game, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State on uh, my TV. And I watched uh, the pay-per-view on my iPad, the rest of it. So, uh, it was a interesting deal. I don't normally leave early, but I was done. I finished. And, uh, did what I needed to have done and 
we move on. So I like the show. I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good show. I like the early, the, the first half that I did, uh, I, the matches I thought were pretty damn strong, some stronger than others. That's just the nature of the beast, but I thought it was a good show. I really did. I, I enjoyed it. I thought talents worked their ass off. Thought it was well booked. The matches all seem to have rev, uh, have meaning. The dots yeah. are the dots are all being, being connected well. So I thought that was a good good scenario. So it was it was fun. It was fun. I like to work more, but that's always going to be the case. You know, hell, I'm, no, I'm an old ball player. I want to play. So, uh, but I was happy to do what I did, and hopefully the folks enjoyed it. it. Seemed like they did. I got some very positive feedback. You always get one or two people that you know say something stupid. Uh, the one that uh, I thought I was most humorous is that the second half of the pay-per-view was good because Jr. was not on it. Oh my I, gosh! Isn't that nice? It's so nice people be thought, and they got to tag you in too. You know, you got to tag you in, in or they call it kids call it. But anyway, the uh, hey, look, it was what it was. It was a fun show to do. I was happy to work with Excalibur and Taz. Uh, then Shivani came in and spelled me at the end. The which is the plan. And, uh, so I thought it went okay. I thought I was, I was really, have, I was proud of the effort everybody made crew, uh, office, everybody had a good night. Everybody had their, had a good night when they needed it. I know everybody was excited to see the young bucks and Kenny Omega back. And, uh, I was personally excited to see you get some flowers on social media. I don't know that, uh, you caught the, the post show scrum maybe you did but uh jack perry was there jungle boy yeah. and uh there was a lot of discussion about his name and what do you know jr was right jungle boy jack wow. perry and maybe jungle boy just won't be the, the the only name forever uh i think you called that shot a few years ago and it was met with some criticism but old jr he knows a thing or two about wrestling y'all i don't know if you know <laughs> that but he does well he can't be jungle boy forever Right. And this kid's got such a bright future. Yeah. In my, in my opinion, uh, you know, he's, he's working hard he's getting stronger and he's, he's filling out. He's hell he's young. And I was, uh, had a real nice moment with he and his mom and his sister, uh, after the show, uh, they were kind of fawning over him, which they should. And I told his mom how proud I was of him. And I think that meant a lot to him and I, and he does mean a lot to me. I think he's a great kid. He's yeah, well, he was well raised. He's got good parenting. Uh, she's a nice, nice lady, and uh, she's got a hell of a talented son. It feels like he's going to be a big star. He cemented that even further with his cage match, which was just spectacular against uh, Luchasaurus. They opened the show, which we've talked about before here on the show, was being really, really prime territory. So, Congrats to all around another million dollar gate for AEW. I'm sure it's going to do well on pay-per-view. We should have those numbers here in a few days and yeah, we're off to the next one, man. I, I think normally what's next for you guys is revolution, but everybody wants to know, man, what do we expect with, uh, his Lordship, Mr. William Regal, you and I are recording this ahead of dynamite. I got to tell you, I, uh, I hoped that that would be the case. I love the line that Max had been using. You know, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist, which I first learned about from the movie Usual Suspects back in 94, 95, or whatever it is. And I thought, and he's been promising he won't use the dynamite ring, dot, dot, dot. I wonder if he uses the Nux. And when Regal slid him over, man, it's going to be, uh, uh, as Bruce would say, a fresh paint of coat. I'm excited about, you know, what this is going to do for the Blackpool Combat Club. And yeah. Regal. I mean, I think Regal should have as much mic time and camera time as we can get him every week. He's just a phenomenal performer. He is. He is. And he's having the time of his life, enjoying his role. A very valuable member of the AEW team. Uh, he helps a lot of talents. Uh, he's there early in the morning. He works a talent in the ring. That's Regal. So, uh, uh, he's, he's been a very valuable asset. That was a, I can't say that was a totally shock. Because I thought something might be up there and it's just too good an opportunity not to parlay and it was right. parlayed well. Really great show. Hope you go out of your way to see it. And, uh, today's topic is going to be the British bulldog. But before we get going, I need to, uh, clarify last week, you and I talked about an old clash of the champions and, uh, we talked about how hard work Bobby Walker 
was supposed to be the tag team partner of uh, Ron Simmons in that clash of the champions. I mistakenly got my enhancement hards backwards. It was actually hard body Harrison who went to prison. Another African-American enhancement talent there in the, in the WCW program. Well, I confused it. So old hard body. He still, he still walks amongst us, but good. Uh, I'm sorry. Hard, hard work does. I did it again. Hard work. Bobby Walker was supposed to be in that match, not hard body Harrison. So correction there. Forgive me, Lord. Happy holidays, everybody. This is Jason sensation. And I had the utmost pleasure of sitting down with top guy members to tell my story of being the greatest wrestling impersonator of all time. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Check it out on ad-free shows right now. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Andre the Giant, you think you're going to end Hulkamania, man? Well, Hulkamania is going to run wild on you, man. And what you're going to do, brother, when Hulkamania and all the powers of Hulkamania run wild on you, brother? You, Elizabeth! No, and I started to do his impression to him, and he flipped out on me. He lost it. Man, hey, man, come here. <laughs> Let me hear a couple of those voices. Damn, like two stone cold. Oh, 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 man, that's damn good. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you very much. Yes, Triple H, yes, I love it. Smackdown, yes. <laughs> You get out of the washroom now! You <laughs> combing your hair like you're Lex Luger? Look at you, pretty boy! You think you're a Luger? Come on! That was so much fun. I had a blast. I love ad free shows. And if you want to watch the entire episode on demand, you can check it out on adfreeshows.com, along with so many of my favorites. Uh, let's jump right into uh, today's topic, though. The British Bulldog Man. I can't believe that we're finally talking about him. We're talking about him today because he would have celebrated a birthday here this coming Sunday. Born November 27th, of course, in England, just outside of Manchester. Um, he, he starts wrestling on ITV's popular World of Sport TV show when he's just 15, along with his older cousin, Tom Billington, the Dynamite Kid. Right. Talk, talk to me a little bit about the legacy of world of sport TV. What's the point of time you, uh, you had some sort of loose affiliation there. No. Yeah. Yeah. I worked with the ITV guys, uh, when they were thinking about launching a wrestling brand, uh, and, uh, it was just the big time. It was world of sport was the, was, if you made it to that, you made it, you made it because they had such a huge audience and ITV was certainly available in virtually all the homes. I mean, it had a huge footprint. So once you got booked on ITV, uh, you, you were on your way to the opportunity for success. And I think that it launched, uh, several guys, including Davey. That's a hell of a picture, huh? Yeah. Let's talk about it. We see big daddy there. Big daddy is British wrestling's biggest star. And it's been a controversial topic. Every time the uh, wrestling observer hall of the fame or hall of fame votes comes up every year, but talk to me about big daddy. What's the legacy of big daddy? How big of a star was he across the pond? He was about as big as his belly. He was a big dude, man. Uh, he got over by hook or crook. He just, he was an attraction guy. Nobody else looked like him. Nobody else wrestled like him. Uh, a good talker. So he had big personality, a lot bigger than his athletic ability, obviously. But, uh, he, he, he connected somehow with the audience and they embraced the big son of a gun. And, and he, he did, uh, he was one of the, he was, if he wasn't the biggest star on that brand, uh, I'm not sure who was such a controversial figure these days. I, for one, hope big daddy gets all the hall of fame nods. I mean, this is a fellow who started wrestling in 46, doesn't wind it down until 96. If you're good a draw run. and a yeah, good and, run. And, yeah. You work in this biz for 50 years. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, Bret Hart is said to be the one who first sees Davey boy back in 1979. He's scouting talent in the UK and brings him back to Calgary, uh, where Davey receives a bit more training from Stu Hart and the dungeon. 
Um, the dungeon, you've probably been to Calgary before. Did you ever get to see that? Oh yeah. I was in there waiting on Brett. <laughs> God bless him. He, Brett, uh, had his own clock, his own Brett time. So when I was there to do some vignettes, uh, with him, with Brett. And, uh, so Stu got bored and said, let's go down the basement. Let's go down the dungeon. I'll show you the dungeon. Well, there's nothing to see. It's a basement. And, uh, but yeah, I went down there he showed me a couple of holes. I tapped very quickly. Uh, wow. yeah. Oh yeah. I got stretched and, uh, but he was kind to me. He was empathetic that day, apparently, but I went along with it. What are you going to do? I mean, you know, I'm not going to. Right disrespect the man. I, I, I have too much respect for Stu and his accomplishments. So yeah, I went down there. It's very basic, very scary, very dark. Uh, and a lot of famous people have walked through that, uh, that area in the, in route to get better and become a star. Of course, uh, Billington, AKA dynamite kid, he was already in stampede by the time Davey comes into the territory. So the future British bulldogs were not partners early on, and they're actually rivals and they spend most of 81 and 82 wrestling against each other in the territory. Did you happen to see any of those matches dynamite versus Davey? I, I have not, I have not, but I can only imagine how great they were. Yeah. No kidding. While in stampede, Davey meets Diana, they get married in 1984 and boy, they're going to have a heck of a run together here in the, uh, WWF Davey boy was, uh, taking his first new Japan tour in 1983, where the bulldogs are put together for the very first time. Dynamite had already been to uh, Japan several times. Of course, he became well, well known for that package or those matches against, um, tiger mask, as we see yeah. here on video on YouTube. Uh, so let's talk about it. New Japan puts them together. The British bulldogs. Did you see any of their stuff prior to them becoming the bulldogs or is your first introduction of these cats? as a tag team, once they're on national TV, I think that the latter, uh, yeah. and, and the reason for that was not because I was, uh, uh, didn't want to see it. It's just the, the availability of the footage, right? You know, we take it for granted in, in today's world because you can yes. digitally find anything. Uh, and that was the days before the internet and before all those, all those, uh, little gimmicks. And, uh, so I didn't see them until they got more mainstream. But there was no doubt in my mind that uh, they were they were one of the best tag teams I ever saw, without a doubt. And uh, I thought they were just ter tremendous. And it's certainly the nice thing about this show is that we get to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Mr. Billington and his greatness. He was just was phenomenal and a little crazy, but very very talented and. Uh, uh, he made his mark. So they were a really uh, outstanding team and, uh, and I love their work when they got to WWF back in the day, I, I thought they were just terrific and, uh, so innovative and new, and, you know, they used a lot of the British stuff. Obviously they're both Brits and uh, a lot of unique little counters and reversals and things like that. So, uh, but they were perpetual motion and uh, I really appreciated their work and still do to today. Phenomenal stuff. Of course, Vince is going to buy out stampede in 84 as part of the deal. He's going to bring the British bulldogs and Brett, the Hitman heart into the WWF. Well, that'll do. You want to talk about acquiring a territory and a heck of a roster. That yeah. picks all the boxes right there. And the bulldogs are one of the few folks who have a deal that allows them to continue to work. their all Japan tours as well as work for Vince. Of course, eventually they're going to get switched over to a WWF only deal. Um, there's a, a story out there that I guess has grown as the years have gone by that perhaps Vince promised Stu a bunch of money and never actually paid it all for the stampede territory. Have you heard that before? I've heard the rumors. I don't have anything conclusive to add to that. Uh, that was one of the old stories going around. I just, I, I, I don't know what to think about it. I don't know if it's even, even remotely accurate. I don't. I just can't see Vince not paying his tab. He's, he's played plenty, plenty of tabs for me. I can tell you that. So I don't know how true that is, Connie. I really don't. There, there may be some validity to it somewhere deep down. I don't know. Uh, you know, those that think it's uh, true can think what they choose because I don't have uh, any information to discount their opinion. I don't know where all that he headed. 
but there was always some sort of controversy around that whole situation. It was a, I don't want to say it was a hostile takeover because it really wasn't hostile, uh, to that degree, but it was, it was pretty cool. I thought, uh, but I have a hard time believing that Vince didn't pay his bill, but nonetheless could have happened. They're at first given Lou Albano as their manager. And, uh, I mean, I guess we should just address it. These guys are, are really strong wrestlers, but maybe not the best promo because that's just not what they've grown up with in wrestling so far. And in this era, it was pretty common for most acts in the WWF to have some sort of a manager, but they're also given Matilda, the bulldog, yeah. add a bit more character to the team. Of course, we would eventually see uh, Jake Roberts come over. They give him a snake in a bag. We see Coco come in. They give him a bird. It, it's kind of par for course. We're trying to change the presentation, maybe to involve kids, maybe to expand merchandise opportunities. But these, the well, these are changes to their presentation. Captain Lou and Matilda, no? Oh yeah, yeah. We just added some added some sizzle, some color to their to their uh, presentation. Uh, boy, what a that, I've heard of many stories about Matilda and traveling and how they fed her, <laughs> fed her or, or maybe she was sleeping too long. Maybe she had something ingested that, uh, would calm her down. So it was a lot of stories about Matilda. That's a hell of a, you know, I've always thought the guys are being a champion and having to carry that title around the heavy as it is, uh, or they are, uh, was kind of daunting, but, uh, they, they did it. And, uh, by hook or crook, you know, you might not have been a member of the ASPCA, uh, but, uh, you might not have liked that, but nonetheless, Matilda got a nice push as, uh, my man, uh, Dave Silva would say, got a nice push. Well, we're going to give a push right now because it's never too early to start thinking about gifts. I know it's Thanksgiving, but Christmas will be here before you know it. And whether it's for a friend or the friend in your pants, make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom Then add in manscapes, top of the line shower products to have the people thinking all I want for Christmas is you Santa cares about his sack. And so should you look nice when you're ready to get naughty by going to manscaped.com and use the promo code Jim Ross for free shipping and 20% off. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything you need to help deck the halls from face to balls just in time for mistletoe season. The Platinum Package has each product from the best-selling performance package, plus the body wash, the two-in-one conditioner and shampoo, the ultra-premium deodorant. It really is the best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat down near candy cane. Don't forget you're getting the Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. Both are rocking that new proprietary advanced skin safe technology. Gonna make sure that they're both waterproof so there's no issue clearing the snow out of your driveway. They've also got a 4000K LED light on it. You can light the way like Rudolph. Now that you've groomed up that candy cane, let's make sure you don't smell like a reindeer. The Platinum Package has shower products. All the shower gear, sulfate-free, vegan, made to have your skin feeling hydrated, smelling fresh. And it doesn't stop at the shower. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. Little known fact here, this is how Tony Schiavone got back in wrestling. Well known, he had the stinkiest balls at the drive-thru at Starbucks. Started doing <laughs> these podcasts with me. I got him the ball deodorant. Tony Khan came calling. The same trick worked for Eric Bischoff to get back in WWE. He needed the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Before that, before Manscaped, man, his boys were hitting the water every time he took a plop. Not anymore. The Platinum Package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit. Oh, and the perfect stocking stuffer? It's the new body buffer. It's an incredible body scrubber. It's going to make exfoliating easy. Like cleaning that dirty ass old loofah. To get 20% off and free shipping with the code JimRoss at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Just use the code Jim Ross. Manscaped. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. Great gift idea. Com completely self-contained. Yes. One call, one save that money, get the free shipping. It's all great. The products are wonderful. We make we have fun with this with this sponsor, but they're they're real.
there for there's nothing to laugh at. Uh, once you, once you get there, you're going to not want to go back. And let me say this too. If you've never gifted a manscaped, it's something they won't forget. If you're getting, so if you're not sure what to get the guy in your life, if you get them a gift card or a tie or socks, they're going to forget it as soon as they get in the car, but manscaped buddy, it's the gift that keeps on giving and they're going to remember it. And it's, it's going to make an impression. So check it out. Agreed. Uh, let's talk about the bulldogs here. Uh, did you think their style of wrestling would have fit more with mid South or Jim Crockett promotions in this era? It does feel like they're working maybe a different style than the rest of the behemoths in the WWF. Yeah, maybe it may be. I think, uh, both, uh, uh, companies, JCP and mid South could have done great things with those guys. Uh, and so, but here, here's the thing you can't. Great talents, great talent. And whether they're doing more acrobatics and more they're, they're frenetic in their pace, it's, it's really, it's really irrelevant. They're, they were just really, really good and would have been successful in any promotion. Uh, I think that they're Matilda, th they wouldn't have had Matilda in Crockett or Watts. They wouldn't have to deal with that. I don't, I don't think I might be wrong. Uh, but those guys, you just can't discount talent Conrad. I mean, they, they had it, you know, they had their. They're, they're, you know, great rivers and, and all that stuff. And, and, uh, but when it comes down to the bell ring and, and, and getting after it, they were good. They were really good. So, and they did wrestle differently. I think that's what made them unique and what made them successful in the early going is the fact that they were different. We yeah. said it many times here, fans love new, yep. they love different and they check both those boxes. You see them rocking the tag titles there. If you're watching on YouTube. Uh, they're going to go ahead and defeat Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake to become the tag champs at WrestleMania two. It happens in April of 86. They got Ozzy Osbourne in their corner. And it's pretty crazy to think about, you know, what these guys accomplished. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne, the tag titles, WrestleMania, this is a pretty prime time spot, but I can't help but think about the matches they could have had with the rock and roll express or the midnight express. Had they been in Jim Crockett or mid South? I mean. Yeah. Those would have been barn burners, man. They've been great matches to call as a, as a broadcaster. I'd love that. Um, uh, you're right. You know, again, there's their skill set, uh, is universal. So no matter who was booking them or no matter what company they were with and getting their check from, uh, they were going to be stars because they're just that good and that unique. No doubt. Uh, they're going to stay with the company until November of 88. And then dynamite is going to suffer a terrible back injury. That effectively he never really fully recovers from, uh, and, uh, maybe there's a, a fight or two on the way out of there. Maybe some, some pretty rough ribs that rub some people the wrong way. And maybe it taints the end of his run in the WWF, but boy, dynamite kid was ahead of his time. And it's hard to even properly explain, you know, what an innovator he was in the industry. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, uh, dynamite was doing things nobody had ever seen in a wrestling ring. And, uh, that again, making him unique and different was, uh, was great. I don't know if it was done intentionally, but boy, it worked out real well for those guys. It's, uh, it's going to be, uh, what's next for them is stampede in all Japan. Eventually somehow as things happen, they have a major falling out with each other. And I don't think they ever really make up. Did you ever talk to Davey about his falling out with, with, uh, with Tom? No, I didn't Conrad. I never had that. Uh, I never had that. It was never on my agenda, honestly. Uh, but you know, it's just, it's in, like you said, inevitable, you know, uh, and both are very competitive guys, both very strong spirits. So it, it wasn't a total shock that they, uh, they went their separate ways, but it, we, the wrestling business lost a hell of a tag team when that occurred. Yeah, they did. Uh, Davey boy comes back to the WWF in October of 1990. He's going to receive his first major singles push. Now you were in WCW at the time. And of course, one of the opportunities, anytime you're, you're signing up Davey boy Smith is, Hey, this guy can help us draw across the pond here. Yeah. Do you remember there being any discussion about Davey boy in 1990 and WCW, or was it a given he was going back to Vince? I think it was a given he was going back to Vince. It seemed to fit real well. Uh, the package, the production values and so forth. Uh, so I think it was kind of a foregone conclusion. This is what was going to happen. Of course, Davey's most memorable moment of this run and maybe his 
entire career is the SummerSlam 92 match with Bret the Hitman Hart at Wembley Stadium. Davey is going to go on last, win the Intercontinental title. And man, we just have a, a big resurgence of business over there. I know that we often talk about the importance of these moments in wrestling, but this moment is one that was important, not just to Davey boy Smith, but man, an entire country of hardcore wrestling fans. They got a big time show of significance and the quote unquote hometown guy took home the gold. It's a, it's a landmark event for the company. Is it not? Oh yeah. The atmosphere was, uh, un, unparalleled. It was the, that felt that house. Thousands and thousands of people. That's, that's what I remember. Just the, the atmosphere of that, uh, notwithstanding the fact that Brett and, uh, Davey had a great match that, that Brett orchestrated and quarterbacked, uh, it was just really successful. And one of the best matches I've seen that I didn't call, uh, I always remember that match and I didn't even work there then it was just as a fan, I wanted to see uh, the show and the crowd it, it's experience and feel the atmosphere. We're always looking for that next, uh, emotional high in our careers. So, uh, that would, that would have been one of them for me, but I really enjoyed watching that match. And those guys just had amazing chemistry and it also shows the greatness of Bret Hart. He's out there to do the job. Interesting scenario. You know, he's got Davey's got his wife who happens to be Brett's sister. Yeah. In the presentation, which made it enormously uh, unique. Yes. So, uh, that was another element to the whole scenario that, uh, sometimes is passed over, but, uh, it was, it was unique. You, you couldn't book that you, it, it, you, you could have, you could have done it in a, in a work type way, but I mean, Davey and Diana were actually married. Diana and Brett were brothers and sister, brother and sister. So, uh, unique to say the least, it was a interesting booking and it worked out really, really well. And, uh, like I said, they had the match of Davey's life. I don't think Davey ever had a match after that. At least this is me talking, uh, that had as much significance as that SummerSlam match in 92. Of course, uh, it, it all comes to an end for Davey. Just a couple of months later, he's going to drop the intercontinental title to Shawn Michaels on Saturday night's main event. Uh, it's taped in October. It airs in November and that same month, November 92, Davey's going to find himself fired for failing a drug test. And of course, this is very much the steroid era. We're trying to uh, keep Vince McMahon out of prison. <laughs> and when you hear on the other side that, Hey, bulldog may be available. Are you a cowboy thinking, man, we got to roll the dice on this guy. Not really. Really? No. Well, it's just hard to, again, the drugs and alcohol becomes a big issue. And uh, at least to me, now I can't speak for cowboy on that one. Uh, but I I think he would have been somewhat, and he was somewhat hesitant to go shopping there considering, uh, the circumstances, the lay of the land at that time. So, uh. You know, but Davey was, was he a good enough talent to be for cowboy to hire? Hell yeah, of course he was, but you don't know how deep in the rabbit hole he was on the drugs and alcohol. You don't know. And if you don't know, you can't pay big money to a talent that you're unsure of the reliability. And certainly when you get fail a test and, and you need rehab, uh, it just it adds a different element to the negotiations. So I don't think it was ever seriously considered simply because of the, of the drug test thing. Well, he comes to WCW February of 93. It's almost around the same time you're going to wind up leaving. I guess you just barely miss him. Yeah. Uh, the run in the company only lasts until November of 93. And then Davey goes back to working in the UK in 94. He returns to the WWF at SummerSlam 94, getting involved in that Brett and Owen cage match. At the time, I think you're on the outs. You're in your hokey pokey phase with Vince and the WWF. It feels like you guys are just passing each other, right? Yeah, pretty much. You, pretty much. Uh, I wish we got a chance to work together because I could call some more of his matches, but that wasn't, wasn't, wasn't in the cards at that time. So yeah, it was, it was, we were kind of passing in the night back and forth. That's kind of typical in wrestling business. We've heard over the years, uh, the story that Vince McMahon would tell guys like Bret Hart, WCW wouldn't know what to do with a Bret Hart. 
in your opinion, are there perhaps certain folks who are better suited for Vince McMahon style of presentation than anywhere else? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's just a different style and different priorities. And like you said, uh, going from, uh, the day of the bruisers and the 300 pounders and the, and the aggression and the violence that you got in a more typical presentation of pro wrestling, um, they, they, they just, you know, it, things are changing. Like you said, the kid friendly expanding the WWE audience, uh, was one of the goals. Hence the, the props, Matilda, the snake, the parrot, whatever it may be, uh, just was a different time. And, and I think that, uh, Matilda was the, the caveat for that, quite frankly, as, as crazy as it sounds, because kids could identify with a cute dog, simple as that. And Matilda, the bulldog fit the business bulldogs perfectly. So yeah. good idea, whoever had it, it was Vince's idea or Patterson's or whomever, maybe it was the, the talent themselves. I don't know, but it's, it fit those guys real well. I thought. You, uh, returned to the company in January of 95. Th is this when you first meet bulldog for the first time, January 95? I'd say so. Yeah. I think what so. was your, what was your first impression of Davey? Great body, a lot of charisma, uh, a lot of talent, just, uh, he had it. He had everything. The only thing he didn't have was a solution to how to step farther away from, uh, from the drug situation. So you were aware, or was it just rumor and innuendo or had somebody actually said, well, we got a, we got a problem here. Well, it just goes to me. It's just common sense, right? Why would you go invest money? Even in a great talent like Davey, if you had suspicion that he still had the, uh, he had his problem. And you can't invest in big money and it would have been big money to get him signed. Uh, if he still had ongoing issues, right? So I think that was a situation. I don't know. To me, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised we're even talking about it because why would you hire somebody that you believed still was dependent on, uh, the, the substances? Wow. Well, uh, he's got some other, uh, issues we'll say. His mother and his sister are both uh, going to be battling cancer mm -hmm. and he's got the civil and criminal cases from uh, an altercation he had in a bar. It's a, it's a tough time for Davey here and Sean and bulldog are both memorably the first two entrants uh, and the last two standing in the 1995 Royal rumble to get that sort of push to come in first and be one of the last guys out. Of course, we know it winds up being Sean's night. But to come down to the final two and go all the way through, it is a vote of confidence from the quote unquote office. No. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, starting out and finishing up with those two guys and, and look, Davey and Sean had good chemistry as well. I guess you can't, I can't find anybody as skilled as they both are and were, uh, that it would have fit better for a great start to the paper. I remember I think that, I think that paper was in Tampa, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe not. But in, in any event, uh, great booking, I thought, and that's got Patterson written all over it because Patterson was a big fan of Davey. Patterson was a huge fan of Shawn Michaels as well. So uh, I, I suspect that Pat Patterson's fingerprints, if, uh, you, you were finding a, doing a forensic study were all over the, the layout of this match and how it started. You're exactly right. That show was in Tampa, uh, on the other side of it. You might be wondering, well, if he came down, if he worked the whole match and it came down to the final two, what's next for him, a tag team with Lex Luger are put together as the allied powers. Uh, they're going to go ahead and pick up a win over Jacob and Eli blue at WrestleMania 11 in Hartford. And it doesn't feel like he's getting the push that you might've imagined if you just watched the Royal rumble, but that all starts to change in the summer of 95, he turns heel. He attacks the WWF champ diesel during their match with men on a mission. He shaved his head. He's put with, uh, Jim Cornette. Now we've got, uh, a totally new British bulldog. He's been a baby face for a long time here in the company. Did you prefer his work as a, a heel or baby face better? I liked him as a heel. I liked him as a heel. Uh, he could be a little bit more organically withdrawn, more arrogant, 
uh, he took great bumps. You know, one thing a heel's got to do is feed a great comeback and, and take multiple bumps on the comeback from the baby face. And he could do that athletically. He was just uh, superior to most anybody. So I think him as a heel and then adding him with Jim Cornette, I thought was really smart because Cornette could talk anybody into seats. He could sell his talent better than 99% of the managers I ever saw. And so I think that was a nice, uh, upgrade for, for Davey as well. Having Cornette there as his mouthpiece. Hey, if you're looking for an upgrade of some great wrestling, let me remind you that this episode is brought to you in part by titlematchnetwork.com, where right now you can take advantage of their holiday special, save 50% off all new memberships with the coupon code Conrad, all lowercase at checkout. That includes every pay-per-view and video on demand. They've got hundreds of exclusive new live streams every year, a near endless amount of pay-per-views, shoot interviews, documentaries, and more. One of the biggest collections of women's wrestling content on the planet, plus a ton of title match originals, including their new interview series with legends like Greg, the hammer, Valentine, Sabu, the Godfather, and more title match network is the only streaming platform to bring you the entire WrestleCade weekend this weekend gets kicked off tomorrow. Bob Van Dam and Shane Douglas have their live podcast. And then on Saturday, it's the WrestleCade super show. With the Big Show, DDP, Kurt Angle, Eric Bischoff, and more. And then on Sunday, Ladies Night Out number 11, we got Ivy Lee, we got Sue Young, we got Tessa Blanchard, and so many others. But maybe what I'm looking forward to most, AML Wrestling, Sunday the 27th. Can't believe this is real. But George South is wrestling Nick Gage. Bless his heart. <laughs> Titlematchnetwork.com. The is blood will flow, Conrad. <laughs> it will be plentiful. You don't want to miss it. You know, everybody's talking about last matches. Well, that might actually be George South's last match. Tune in. Titlematchnetwork.com is the perfect gift for the holiday season. Take advantage of this holiday special. Save 50% off all new memberships. The coupon code Conrad, all lowercase at checkout. And if you don't like what you see, Daddy, cancel any time. That's Titlematchnetwork.com with coupon code Conrad, all lowercase at checkout, and save 50% off all new memberships. Wish those guys at uh, Winston-Salem good luck this weekend. I've been a, I went to that, uh, that, uh, event once. Yeah, we hung out at the bar once you and I yeah. were there. Mean Gene was there. He was enjoying That's, a few clear ones. Yes, he did. And God bless him. He, I miss those days, but he was, uh, but I had a good time there in, uh, in, in the Carolinas. So I hope those guys do well and they can make money and. The talents are there, get paid well, and everybody has fun. That's the main thing. Just go have fun and meet these stars and all that good stuff. So, and this, this deal that Conrad is offering here is, is a hell of a deal. And if you like content, this is a content King. No doubt about it. Tons to go around. Check it out. Title match network. Uh, or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. I'm excited, man. This is a big deal. Titlematchnetwork.com, the promo code Conrad. Save yourself a bunch of cash. Uh, speaking of cash, I think Davy Boy was looking to make some with a feud with Lex Luger. Of course, they were baby faces as the Allied Powers. Now that he's a heel, seems natural. I can wrestle my old tag team partner. But as we know, well, he shows up on the first nitro. I don't know who was more disappointed in that Vince McMahon, Jim Ross, or Davy Boy, but it happened. <laughs> Uh, bulldog probably left in the dark about Luger leaving too. It was a surprise to everybody, huh? Oh yeah, absolutely. We were shocked. I was shocked. You know, him showing up on nitro was quite a coup for Eric and, uh, and his team. And, uh, it made an impact and got people talking and that was the nature of the beast. Simple. Did you think, uh, he was hot about it or is it the boys taking care of the boys? I, I, I know that we're supposed to keep the office quote unquote in the dark. I get that, but what's the, what's the protocol for talent in a circumstance like that? What do you mean? Exactly. I'm not sure I follow you. Well, like if you're jumping and you're leaving, are you supposed to give them a heads up or is it truly one of those? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, doing business the right way. You give notice. Yeah. So you can be fair to the entire locker room and guys that you have put that they've put you over have given the opportunity to, to get a win and a big, been a big win. So, uh, but there was no communication like that to my knowledge and, uh, you know, Lex shows up and, and, uh, the rest is what we, 
have written about and talked about, uh, endlessly seemingly, but nonetheless, it, it should be, everybody should give their notice. Everybody should do things the right way. I think sometimes of all the people in the pro wrestling world, nobody takes having a loss harder than a talent. And that to be honest with you kind of annoys me. It's, it's fiction, right? And somebody helped you with a win to elevate your situation. The least an individual can do is return the favor. Well, speaking of returning the favor, uh, bulldog is now trying to become a, a credible main event heel and, uh, having Cornette do a lot of the talking is an obvious plus, um, we do, we do try some things here, including diesel and bulldog for the fourth in your house. It goes down October 95 from Winnipeg. Brett's on commentary. He's going to interfere. It's going to be a DQ. And this really feels like the first time we get to see Davy boy as a main event here in the States. You know, we saw a little bit of it in WCW, but for Vince McMahon, this is it. And Bruce has talked about that story where it is a big pull apart at the end of the show. And of course, nitro has just come around, but Brett tells the story or, or, or Bruce tells the story that boy Vince was pissed at the end of this pay-per-view, not happy with the way the main event was perceived or maybe the stress and pressure of, of WCW getting hot with nitro. Do you remember Vince being particularly frustrated in late 95? <laughs> yeah, in late 95. Yeah, that morning he had egg whites and he had turkey sausage and no, I don't know. Uh, no, I don't really remember. I know it happened. And I know he was pissed off, but I learned from working with him, Connie, that when you knew that he was in a pissed off mood, just avoid him. You know, I didn't need to know the dirt. I'd get it soon enough and I'd get it from the, the horse's head, not the horse's ass. Right. And when Vince was ready to talk about it, he, he did and he, and he would. But he was, uh, he, he was, I remember him being unhappy. I don't know if it was because of the finish didn't click or the match just was, you know, kind of clumsy. I don't know. Right. But, but I do know that he had an issue with the presentation. Well, Jim Cornette was obviously a big fan of the British bulldog. And he had this to say, I don't think anybody understands how great of an athlete Davey really was. Yeah. He knew everything. And even though he put on so much weight to have the body. He still moved like a lot heavyweight and he had such flexibility. He was so strong at the time. He was just a special athlete in the ring. And, and I think everybody kind of agrees with that, but I'm picking up what you're putting down on this program so far. He had, uh, too many off the field circumstances and challenges that maybe it hindered his career. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think so. I think, you know, I've, I mentioned here and I may have already mentioned it today, you know, the when I was hiring talent, one, the number one box that had to be checked was reliability. Right. And there was a point in time during Davy's journey there that, uh, reliability became an issue. And, uh, and I, I contribute that not to Davy's lack of love for the business or the fact he got lazy all of a sudden, I think the, uh, his substance abuse was really uh, a hindrance. And, uh, you know, sometimes talents pick the substances over their career and think they can pull them both off because they're supermen. Uh, so I, 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 uh, I saw that, you know, Cornette's right. I mean, Davey was spectacular, uh, but it was just too bad that again, we've talked about this topic. It's sad that, that you know, there wasn't enough help there wasn't enough knowledge of drugs and, and how to uh, get clean and things of that nature. The information flow now on, on, on drugs is so much more, there's so much more information out there. Uh, it was just a different world back then. So, but he needed, he needed, he needed inpatient care in my opinion earlier than he got it. Was Vince, uh, had Vince lost faith in him? Do you think, or was he still when did that, when did that start to rear its head for Vince? Do you think around this time, uh, I, I think we're just all waiting that, you know, Davey's going to kick out of this matter and address his issues head on, but you gotta be, uh, you gotta set your ego at the door. Right. And, and you gotta 
face up, fess up that you got an issue and, but we're here to help you. And some guys accept the help and some guys just look at it as a sign of weakness. And the one thing that wrestlers don't want ever a promoter, especially a promoter or the booker to perceive them as is weak. And, uh, I think that would have been the case in this situation that, you know, it was just, they it was battling two opponents, one in the ring and one outside the ring. And, you know, I, I can't get mad at him for that. I mean, he had a, he had a, had an issue, right? What he needed was he needed to step away from wrestling, go impatient and get help. And all those things did not fall into place again. And that was a lot of, a lot of that was somewhat ego driven, you know, the old, well, he's got a chink in the armor, you know, uh, he likes the pills too much or something along those lines, but it was just hard to, it's hard to, to embrace Davey when you knew how great it could be. And he was enjoyable as hell to be around, you know, with all those ribs and the jokes and, and, uh, you know, he was always a subject of conversation there, uh, in that regard. So it was, uh, it was a hard time for Davey. It was a hard time for Vince. Uh, but the bottom line was, is that Davey needed strong, uh, care. Uh, to help him. And I'm not so sure he ever got that. Can you believe it? It's finally here. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Unless you get stressed out about how to pay for it. Save with Conrad.com can help you make this the best Christmas ever. You won't make a house payment for the next two months. That's right. Skip your next two house payments and use all that cash for your extra holiday expenses and come next year. You're going to have a lower monthly payment. Don't put Christmas on a credit card. Pay your credit card debt off at save with Conrad.com and a MLS number six, five, zero eight, four equal housing lender save with Conrad.com. Well, he winds up getting another main event, uh, this time against Bret Hart for the WWF title. It's in your house from Hershey PA. It's a classic. They go 21 minutes and nine seconds. Deanna Smith is a uh, ringside with Davy boy. It's been pushed on TV. Of course, that she's pushing for Davy boy. It's almost, uh, the second verse of what they did at SummerSlam 92, but now not for the intercontinental title, but for the big belt. And it goes four and a half stars in a 21 minute classic. Really a phenomenal match. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I think you could argue that the two best matches that Davy boy had on pay-per-view for the WWF were both with Bret Hart, uh, yeah. this in your house and then SummerSlam 92, but that's probably the case for a lot of guys. They have their best matches with Bret Hart now. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they trusted Bret. They knew Bret was going to captain the match and lay the match out, call the plays objectively and for the betterment of the match, not for the betterment of one's ego. And, uh, that's how great Brett was. His greatness sometimes is overlooked because like you said, you can go back and look at guys, uh, you know, uh, that he had great matches with a uh, Pierre, uh, he had a, the, the Pierre Olet, the, uh, uh, PCO. Yeah. 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 PCO now, uh, but, but him, uh, Del Wilkes, uh, what was the Japanese kid's name that had all the tattoos in his body? Hakushi. Hakushi. Yep. Yeah. Who I thought was excellent. I thought he was very much underrated and off the radar, but you can just look at, you can make a list, a grocery list of all the guys that Brett worked with that they had their best match ever in the business. Coincidentally with Brett Hart. Super fun match, a phenomenal match. If you're going to watch one Davy boy match, I, I would recommend either SummerSlam 92 or, or this one in your house, December 95, such a classic, uh, go out of your way to watch it. Just phenomenal stuff here. But as we fast forward into 96, it's going to be time for Davy to get another shot at the title, but now I get Shawn Michaels, who is the champ. So the show is of course, appropriately titled beware of dog. Once again, they're going to bring in Diana as part of the presentation. They're going to portray Shawn Michaels as a womanizer. They're going to allege that Shawn has made a pass at her. Allegedly, Davey is not comfortable with that creative and maybe starts to feel out some other opportunities, other places. Do you remember Davey expressing that he was uncomfortable with this storyline about yeah. working with Shawn Michaels? I think, I think the whole Hart family was uh, headed by Stu. I'm sure Bruce has told you the story about, uh, he has one, I think he had at least one phone call with Stu regarding this topic. And it was the way Bruce tells it's very entertaining. 
Right. Uh, but the whole family had, I think some issues with it. And that, that, that surprised me a little bit with all the crazy creative things that were, that had happened in stampede in Stu's territory. Uh, you know, this seemed to be mild to me. Uh, but nonetheless, it was what it was. The family was uncomfortable. Uh, so that's what it is, man. It's just, it, I thought it was a little bit, uh, over thought on their pers- perspective. And I might be wrong. Listen, I'm not in the family and I, I didn't have the same, uh, mindset personally. I just thought it was another, another angle, another way to get more people to watch and become interested. Of course, this show, uh, beware of dog in Florence is probably most remembered for the power outage. So they wind up doing, uh, the, the main event here, but then they have to redo the pay-per-view a couple of days later. It's just situation, you know, normal, all fucked up. As we like to say, snafu, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's, just a, it's a mess this show. And that's not bulldog's fault. It's an interesting storyline. It's a great pairing of him and Shawn Michaels. We know they can go. Yeah. Every now and again, you just get a show that for whatever reason, it's just snake bit. Right. You know? That was it. That was, that one was snake bit. And I think we came back and did that pay-per-view on Tuesday or something. Yeah, uh, that's exactly right. Yeah. We did it on Sunday and then on Monday promoted the pay-per-view as a make good, uh, the following day on Tuesday. Yeah. Right. All right. So I, I remember, I think Vince started the pay-per-view. I was, I think I was out there, but then on the, on the Tuesday edition, uh, I did the show not for any stick particular agenda. It's just what, that's what he wanted. So, you know, it was like somebody, I got a ton of, uh, I mentioned it earlier about, uh, this past pay-per-view for AEW. Oh, why weren't you there at the end? Well, I wasn't booked. Right. It's real simple. My assignment was six matches. I'd have done 10 if you needed me to, but that's what Tony wanted. And I was happy to comply. It was worked out for me. And, uh, it's, uh, not just because I got to watch a little bit, a little piece of the bedlam game. Uh, but nonetheless, I, 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 I enjoyed, uh, what I did. And I think younger, when I was younger, I probably would have been more pissed or would have been, I wasn't pissed at all Saturday night, but I probably would have been a little bit more vocal, which is my fault would have been my fault. Quite frankly. If you're a team player, Conrad, you're a team player. You, you can't be it's the, the old pregnant thing. You either are, or you aren't. And I'm a team player. So in, in any event, it did it suit all my needs. Probably not, but I had a blast on Saturday night and the crowd was awesome. A lot of fun. They kept us motivated. I think having three guys at the announce table was a, is a better fit than four or five. So it was, uh, quite the. Quite the scenario there. We get a rematch of Shawn Michaels and the Bulldog at King of the Ring in Milwaukee. Mr. Perfect is advertised as a special guest referee here, but instead comes Showtime. They just put him outside the ring in the enforcer position. Shawn gets the victory once again. And that's kind of the end of the Bulldog being painted as a top guy. I, I've heard a uh, a famous wrestling mind say once upon a time, Jim, that in wrestling there are main events like attractions, and then there are opponents. And so when you're building a main event and building a promotion, it's important that you understand, are you the attraction or are you the opponent? And once that really clicked for me, I can look back at this circumstance and see more often than not, they felt like the powers that be in the WWF felt like Davey was the opponent more so than the attraction. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. And I think that was because of past history, right? Reliability, reliability. Well, let's talk about something that we can all rely on Lucy guys. Lots of adults choose to use nicotine, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And not everyone uses nicotine, but if you do, you'll want to listen up, get ready. This is an ad for Lucy breakers. If you're one of the millions of adults who use nicotine, you know that not all products are the same. And there's one new product that I think stands above the rest. Lucy breakers are the only nicotine pouch that gives you a blast of flavor from the first moment to the very last. Each pouch contains a capsule that you break open to release a rush of flavor that doesn't fade away like those other pouches. 
you know, the ones that rhyme with thin. They come in so many flavors, mint, berry, citrus, mango, even espresso. And you don't have to go to the gas station or corner store to get them. Just order online and they'll be shipped straight to your door. Every order gets free shipping. Plus, if you subscribe, you'll save 15% and never run out. And this is something that I've had experience with. There's a guy in my office who, uh, well, he's been suffering lately because whenever it gets cold, he'd have to run outside to enjoy his nicotine fix. And that's not really comfortable these days. It's like 26 degrees here in Alabama. He's got Lucy breakers. So whether you use nicotine while working, creating, or playing, Lucy breakers are the intelligent choice. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Get 10% off your first order when you use promo code JR at checkout. The shipping is always free. That's lucy.co. The promo code is JR to receive $10 off and free shipping. Visit lucy.co for more details. We thank Lucy for sponsoring the podcast. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. One more time, that's lucy.co. The promo code is JR. You receive $10 off and free shipping. And your your significant other will appreciate it as well. Oh, yeah. You know. Absolutely. Well said. Uh, Next up, we got the British Bulldog. He's going to start teaming up with uh, Owen Hart, and uh, they become a pair for a lot of stretch here afterwards. And uh, they win the tag title September 96 from the Smoking Guns at In Your House Mind Games in Philadelphia. Uh, Or Actually, I think that would have been October. Anyway, the fall of 96, they're strapped up, Daddy. And Clarence Mason comes in to act as their manager. He's essentially going to replace Jim Cornette. What's the deal here? Jim Cornette is a motor mouth, one of the all time great managers in all of wrestling. But what did Clarence Mason add to the presentation here? Not a damn thing. Yeah. Nice guy, smart young man, but he had no experience. How do you replace a guy with totally no experience in a key role, uh, with a replace a guy that's arguably one of the top two or three managers in the history of wrestling. And I think you got a fair, fair shake on it. <laughs> I don't remember the circumstances of that booking decision. It might've been the fact that, you know, Cornette pissed somebody off. I don't know, but I know that's not a fair trade. I need right. a lot of draft picks and a lot of things. I need a lot of add-ons to make that trade. It just wasn't fair, uh, in that regard, in my opinion. And he was a nice guy. He's, he's got, he's put it, put into a scenario, Conrad, where he's managing main event guys that we're counting on to draw money and to help, you know, uh, balance the card and bulk it up. And, uh, Clarence didn't know how all the, he didn't have any knowledge of the nuances, what not to say, how to stand, where to move or, you know, all these things. So, uh, but a nice guy, he just, he was miscast. Talk to me about ribs. Uh, the, the British Bulldogs were legendary for their ribs. So was Owen Hart. Did you ever see those guys pull any ribs together? Were they ever, uh, they ever get their gusto up to do one on you? No, uh, I think one of them, I'm not sure who did it. They, uh, saw my briefcase in the back and they, uh, padlocked it to the uh, top of the, the plumbing of the dressing room. Oh. So I had to get somebody at the end of the night when I found out where my briefcase was to, uh, somebody from the building to come with bolt cutters and a law and a tall ladder and get my shit down. I don't know which one did it. I don't know if it was Owen. Oh, well, Owen's ribs were generally good natured, right? They weren't real harmful. You know, they weren't getting their suit cut up. Like Terry Taylor did that one time, things like that. Somebody taking a dump in the King's crown. It wasn't mean spirited, uh, but the bulldog and, and, uh, uh, dynamite would do some pretty stiff ribs. Right. And luckily, luckily for me, I avoided that, but, uh, everybody didn't, they wanted to rib you. They're going to get you. And nobody was, nobody was protected. You know, hell Owen used to rib his own dad. So I, that some of those conversations were absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, cause Stu didn't know who was on the, you know, 
who was on the phone. He thought right. he didn't think he didn't know it was Owen. That's it. That was Owen's. He was brazen and funny and great spirited. I'm glad. I'm so glad that uh, Tony Khan and thanks to Chris Jericho, uh, have kind of been in the bridge between, uh, wrestling and, and Martha Hart and her kids and her family. I can tell you one of the most, I, I have not done anything, uh, more emotional than going back into the green room when, uh, on that night that, uh, at AEW and seeing, uh, Martha sort of, I wasn't going to cry, you know, and I, I did. It just brought the memories just flooded in and I still yeah. care so much about the business and, uh, so forth. Maybe sometimes I care too much. I think sometimes I do, but in any event, uh, it was, it was, uh, just a emotional as hell scenario. And I understand we're going to move forward with that, uh, Owen Hart, uh, agenda in 2023, which is coming up sooner than we think. So I'm, uh, I'm really happy. That was, that was a great thing. Uh, the Brody Lee night was very emotional, obviously, you know, uh, acknowledging the death of one of our favorite people, a big time team member, uh, of AEW. But the other one was a whole different ball game that goes back long before AEW was even a, a brainstorm. So I had a, I'm really glad we did that. And, and I hope that it continues for, for years to come the Owen Hart tournament and so forth. It's real good. So I was happy to be a part of it. And I was happy that we're AEW as a family is a part of, uh, the Martha Hart family. Now, uh, on a wrestling perspective, that's a cool picture right there. Yeah. I hope you're checking it out over on YouTube. Uh, we're uh, trying some new things with the way we produce the shows. And so we've got some, uh, cool little, uh, companion piece photos here for our topics as we scroll through and. Let's talk about Owen and Davey. They're tag champs for like eight months. And who bests them? Well, who else? Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels, May 26, 1997, Evansville, Indiana. Of course, along the way, we try something new. The company introduces a brand new European championship, which I believe if you're a belt nerd would be the first time they had a Joe Marshall or a Jamar belt to present. And, uh, comes down to Owen and bulldog in the finals of the tournament which take place in Berlin. So Davy boy is going to win and he becomes a double champion. It's another instant classic match, but allegedly the story is Vince was so upset with the way that show looked the production of that show that, uh, well, they had a come to Jesus meeting on the production side and, uh, well, things were never quite the same with the way that, that the show was presented moving forward. That was a phenomenal match, but do you remember, and this is a tape show, uh, it's across the pond in Berlin. Do you remember Vince being upset with the way it looked and felt? I really don't. I really don't Conrad. I mean, it, certainly if, if it's been researched and verified, you know, it, it was what it was specifically. I don't remember it. Look, he, I was immersed in so many decisions and talent, <coughs> pardon me, talent issues, excuse me, that, uh, one doesn't stand out above the other as a rule. This one was one of those examples. Uh, so I don't really remember Vince being, you know, Bruce had more, con more of that because Bruce spent more time. He and Patterson with Mc with McMahon than I did on that level. I was in a different, I almost had a different level. Like I was up here and they were down here. I'm not saying that whatsoever. We just had different agendas and a different checklist to work off of. Let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the next, uh, new thing we're doing in the company here in 1997, we're recreating the heart foundation this time. It's a fivesome. It's no longer just Davey and Tom. Now it's Owen Hart. It's Brett, the Hitman Hart. It's Jim, the Anvil Nightheart. It's Brian Pillman. And of course the British bulldog and the big moment I feel like is the Canadian stampede pay-per-view in Calgary, yeah. July of 97. This might be the pinnacle of this group. But man, what a band, what a cast of characters. I think you could put this up there with the dangerous Alliance. And I mean, it's one of the all time great factions. Is it not? Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Conrad hey, look at them. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, Owen Pillman, Brett, the Anvil and, and bulldog, uh, that was, I'll have to say, of, I, I called a lot of pay-per-views for Vince, big ones, medium sized ones, the whole deal. 
I don't think I ever called a pay-per-view, including all the WrestleManias that I broadcast that, uh, I like more than the Canadian stampede, you know, where else can you go to work and have a great big old Turkey leg about the size of something off the set of, uh, the Flintstones, huge Turkey leg, uh, walk in the mid walk in the midway st- It's like a state fair. And it's just got all kinds of attractions and families and people were there and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I love that show and, and, and nothing. I can't, I can tell you this. I'm embarrassed to say, I don't remember what else was on that card. I'm sure there are a lot of good stuff because it seemed like it moved real well, but nothing compared to how we went off the air. No, no, I totally agree. And it was a fun show. I mean, it was one of the first times we saw the great Sasuke uh, on WWF. Uh, it was him and Takamichi Noku undertaker was in there with Vader and that was maybe not all that great, pretty fun match with Hunter Hearst Helmsley and mankind. They're brawling all over the place, but. The main event was a 24 minute affair and the building is still shaking 25 years later. Yeah, it was awesome. Awesome. And the emotion, you couldn't book that emotion. You couldn't create that emotion in a fictional sense. And somebody said, we mean that was a, that match was a shoot. No, it wasn't a shoot. It's just the fact that how it was booked and the Hart family at ringside and all the family ties and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, it was, uh, interesting. And you go back and look at that match more closely. You'll see a lot of little things that kind of make you uncomfortable Yeah. because, you know, after the match is over, the shots are taken. And I think Austin got a tater, a potato. Uh, I think it's the first time Natty Neidhart was in the ring too. I, I think her and TJ Wilson, both as little kids jump yeah. in the heart of family celebration. How cool was that? That's, that's good is. stuff. So uh, anyway, it was a, a very memorable night. Uh, the match delivered and when you can get the 10 guys on the same page, uh, that's a huge accomplishment as a booker and as a agent. Uh, but boy, howdy, it was, it was something else. It, it did everything it needed to do to close that show in a massive way. And they pulled it off. Uh, I want to mention, uh, there are also heels in the United States, but baby faces everywhere else. And maybe that's never more prevalent than the one night only pay-per-view in Birmingham, England. We've recently talked about this. It's bulldog in the main event again, this time, not for the intercontinental title against Bret Hart, but uh, for the European title with Shawn Michaels bulldog comes in as the champ promises that he's going to win. And it doesn't happen. I think a lot of people are, uh, critical of this in hindsight. We've talked about it though, and said that the original plan was that we were going to have this be the first UK pay-per-view because normally the WWF pay-per-views are just included on television, but this is our first time having a real pay-per-view attraction that we can monetize across the pond. So let's get some heat here and then we'll come back in the spring and have Davey get his revenge and give Shawn Michaels his come up. And we know thanks to the screw job that doesn't happen. Uh, but boy, it maybe is a little too much heat. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it. You interview him early in the show here one night only. And he had this to say, it's going to be very special. I got my sister who's sitting in the crowd. She's battled cancer twice. Once when she was just a year old and just a few months ago, she was in the hospital in Manchester and they didn't think she was going to pull through. They've taken almost everything out of her. They possibly can take. And she pulled through it. So to me, she's a champion of my eyes. So I'm dedicating this match tonight to my sister, Tracy. And of course he lost. Did you know creatively? Did you know the creative when they're cutting that promo? Did he know then, or does he find out after? Uh, You know, I don't know. I would say he found out after I didn't know. I didn't know at that time, what part of me was going to go down. Uh, and I never, I, I thought it was pretty much a no brainer that, uh, Davey would slip over somehow, have a great match. Sean's going to get his, his shine and all that stuff, which is fine. But I thought at the end of the night, we'd see, uh, Davey with his hand raised and his sister celebrating and so forth. It seemed like a perfect fit, but that's not what went down. And, and, and maybe that's, maybe that's good booking. Hell, I don't know. But it wasn't a very popular decision in the locker room, and it wasn't a very popular decision with the crowd. 
it's pretty crazy to think about what all is going to happen here in a row. So as a reminder, this is September of 1997 and he's supposed to, or he thinks dedicate this match to his, his cancer laden sister and, and win the belt and, or, or keep the belt retained in the main event and live happily ever after he drops the title ton of heat on Shawn Michaels. They fly back for Monday night raw. And that's the raw where Vince sits down with Brett and says, I can't afford to keep you. So see if he can get your old WCW deal. And then just one month later, the world finds out that Brian Pillman has died. Yeah. The hits just keep on coming here, uh, for this, this heart family. And as if that wasn't enough, the following month in November, the Montreal screw job happens. Bulldogs in the room when Brett confronts Vince and ultimately punches Vince. He's going to jump in when Shane jumps on Brett and he pulls Shane off. Uh, he clearly didn't expect anything to happen. He's taken his knee brace off uh, and supposedly bulldog hurts his knee in the scuffle as well, but Davey flies home. And that was that a key word, a key word there, Conrad, supposedly, yeah, supposedly hurt his knee and maybe he did, but it looks suspicious. Were you, what did you think as the head of talent relations, you're trying to keep the band together. Yep. Davey flies home. What's that look like? Is, is, is Vince refusing to let Davey out of his contract? Are there any talks about trying to placate bulldog? We know that ultimately Owen signs on and gets a heck of a raise. Bulldog does not. I think as the story goes, he winds up paying 150 grand to get out of his contract. Talk to me about how all of that maneuvering happened behind the scenes. Oh, it's chaotic and conversations back and forth. This is a matter of bad communication. And you know, people were not, uh, communicating as they should and coming forth was being forthright was not the message of the day. So it was just, you know, it was a different element added daily. It seemed like sometimes a couple of times, well, Vince just got the phone with the, uh, Davies lawyer or whatever. And when you get lawyers involved, I'm not going to go into some tirade about, you know, the legal profession and the battling barristers out there, but you know, it's just, you, you got to communicate, man, you got to communicate. And I think that, uh, Vince was just leery of cutting Davy loose because he thought he was salvageable. And we, we all hope that was the case, but as it worked out at the end of the day and how Davey passed, uh, it, it wasn't. Let's talk about, uh, something else that maybe we need to talk about giving a little haircut to we're talking about, of course, our friends at Manscaped. It's never too early to play the holiday music. It's never too early to start thinking about gifts. And whether it's for a friend or the friend in your pants, you can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor. Use that lawnmower <laughs> 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking all I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about his sack. So should you look nice when it's time to get naughty. Go to Manscaped. Use the promo code Jim Ross for free shipping and 20% off. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. The Platinum Package has each product from their best-selling performance package, but it's also got the Ultra Premium Body Wash, the Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, and the Ultra Premium Deodorant. Of course, you're still going to be rocking that Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. Both are going to take care of you with their proprietary advanced skin safe technology. These rascals have a 4,000K LED light on it. It's going to help you uh, light the way like Rudolph. You've also got your shower game leveled up in the Platinum Package. All the products are sulfate-free, vegan, made to have you feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. doesn't just stop at the shower, though. They got ball deodorant and ball toner. They call them the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver. The Platinum Package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed put anyone in the holiday spirit. How about this for a stocking stuffer? They got a brand new body buffer. So you get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Jim Ross at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code Jim Ross. Manscaped, 
get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. We thank manscaped.com for sponsoring today's program. Use that code Jim Ross at manscaped.com. So listen, you guys let Davey out of his contract. He's allowed to follow Brett out of his loyalty uh, over to WCW. It's a rather forgettable run. Maybe most memorable for being injured on a trap door. The ultimate warrior is here in the promotion at this same time. And, uh, he has these mythical magical appearance and disappearing acts. So there's a trap door and that's not normal in a wrestling ring. And it's not normal on Davy boy's back. Allegedly, it nearly, it nearly paralyzes Davy boy. He winds up being released by WCW and is even in a full body cast at one point from the injury. And during this time, he really struggles with his addiction to morphine and painkillers. At this point, it would have been hard to imagine that he ever comes back to the company, but he does. And we all know that that surprised me. That's that his return after all the things that went on and all these unfortunate deaths and injuries and drug and alcohol issues that Davey made his return. I'm not, I was not. I'm not against it. I'll give the guy a second. I, I believe in second chances. Gosh, darn. I've had plenty of, them. uh, but you know, he, it was, it was tough. It was really tough. Uh, and you always wonder, is he going to relapse? Is he, is he really clean and sober? Is he healthy enough to get this thing done? And, uh, there's always seemingly, a, an abundance of unanswered questions that really needed to be answered before you kept moving forward with the talent. Right. Well, let's talk about why he comes back because there's a couple of different schools of thought as a reminder, Owen passes away in may of 99 bulldog is back in the company in the summer of 99. On the one hand, people say maybe Vince brought bulldog back because he felt bad about what had happened with Brett. And he felt like this was a nice thing to do for the family to keep bulldog and income, especially on the heels of the Owen Hart thing. Others would say Vince was knee deep in a pissing contest with the family about the whole Owen thing and the, and, and, uh, the Brett thing. And this is a way to sort of create chaos because I think when he does come back, there's some hurt feelings in the family. How could you go work for this guy? Of course, Davey is looking to take care of his family. Like everybody right. else. All right. Where did you land on this? Is this good hearted Vince or maybe nefarious Vince? I think it was a business decision. And I think Vince knew the pending uh, legal issues that were going to occur as a result of Owen's accidental death. Uh, I think that had a, a, a was a play, uh, quite frankly. And let's not forget, you know, what, what Cornette said earlier in the show. Sometimes people take how good Davey was for granted. Yes. And so but he, when you got a chance to get a guy of his caliber, if he's healthy back on your team, it's not a bad thing to try. You just continue to hope that, well, this morphine issue and painkillers, painkillers is a kiss of death, man. Right. And, uh, they're just so easy to carry. They're so easy to take, uh, easy to access, you know, every fanboy doctor out there. Uh, is happy to write a script for a, for, for a pain reliever. And because the boys are so uh, good at telling their story, uh, you know, they got to have strong pain, painkillers. It's not like you take an aspirin. Oh, go take an ibuprofen, something like that. I ain't gonna get it done. So, uh, and I've experienced that lately with my going to my wound doctor on every Tuesday morning, which I, re I always dread. It hurts like hell and, but I understand why we're doing it and I understand it's helping me. So, and that's really at this stage of my life, what I want to do is get healthy and healed and I'm, I'm healing very well as a matter of fact. So I'm proud of that situation, but the wounds of these, of these 22 radiation treatments, uh, got a ways to go to get to where we want to go, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Just keep fighting. Well, we're pulling for you and we were pulling for bulldog to come back here. His return is supposed to start with a series of sit down interviews. And I think these interviews were done by you and it was you sitting down with Davey boy and Diana, but the sit down interviews are never actually going to make air. 
only small clips would be shown and it is obvious rather quickly that this is not the bulldog of old when he gets in the ring. Why didn't these interviews air? I mean, this is something we saw you do a few times in this era. Yeah. So told us, we saw Mick Foley. So I, I could see why this would be smart and something that would be consistent with something you've done with other talent and effective, but it doesn't make air. Why yeah. not? I don't think Vince liked them. I just don't think he thought they rang the bell. Uh, I didn't do anything any differently than I normally do in those interviews. I prepared, I respected the talent, tried to tell a story and bring out the best in the scenario. Uh, but I guess the bottom line of it is, is that Vince just didn't like them. It might, it might've been because he didn't produce them. Might've been because he didn't do the interview himself. I don't know, but, uh, I was surprised that they didn't air at all, except as you mentioned, those little snippets, those little clips, uh, and but I, that's the only thing I can think of Connor. I, I don't remember them being bad. I don't remember them. You know, it's on tape for God's sakes, you can fix whatever, you know, you can edit, you can or omit whatever you want to say. So it was, uh, it was interesting. It, just, it kept adding to that stupid story of, you know, the, the whole, the, the, the family animosity and God almighty, did, did they have reasons to have animosity toward the, the WWF? Of course they did. Right. They lost their son, the youngest son in the family, maybe the most talented, naturally talented guy, uh, in the, from the, in the whole heart family. So everybody was heartbroken in the family and out in the locker room and out. So it was, uh, it was really, uh, I could tell you that I was getting about it, every day was something and man. And, and if you're an administrator, you know, the one thing that you want to be able to do is solve problems. Right. And I, I felt like that I was in a situation where I felt helpless to solve the problem because the, the, uh, g the rules of engagement kept changing. And, uh, so it was just a real, very, very frustrating at that point in time in a company. Well, we see the in, in ring return happen on SmackDown August of 99. He's going to answer an open challenge for the hardcore title over the big boss man. Uh, he's even going to be in the six pack challenge main event of unforgiven 99. And then he's going to lose to the rock at no mercy of October of 99. And that's the last time he's going to be involved in the main event. And, uh, it's even going to show the bulldog being rock bottomed into a bed of dog shit. Yeah. I don't get that. That was insulting and, and it wasn't even funny. Yeah. It's coarse. It's crass. Just go have that great match that you know you, they can have, but the, uh, the dog shit thing didn't fit for me. <laughs> I don't know why that tickles me, but it does. Uh, it didn't, it, uh, it's like, is it, can we go lower? Maybe we should take a picture of the dog actually taking the shit and then doing it. I don't know. That's the bump. I'm being facetious. Obviously it didn't, it didn't belong there. It was somebody's idea of a joke. Well, we can and let's do this at the end. And the the fans will be shocked and they'll be surprised and they'll get a big kick out of it. What they're going to get a big kick out of is a great wrestling match. Right. And at that point in time, uh, Dwayne Johnson, AKA the rock didn't need comedy. He, he was com comedic enough without creating a, 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 a distasteful scenario where uh, dog shit was, uh, allegedly utilized, just had no place. That happens two weeks after Vince Russo leaves the company. This is the same pay-per-view where Jeff Jarrett would hold up Vince McMahon to, uh, drop the title to China. So pretty notable show here Unforgiven 99, but this new version of the bulldog has a new look. He's no longer wrestling in his old long tights or even his short tights. He's wrestling in jeans and he's got new music. And it's apparent that the bulldog, after all these injuries and wear and tear on his body, he's not quite the same in ring performer. And he winds up being put with the mean street posse in a role that was much lower on the cards. He does briefly get another short European title reign. And, uh, here's the recap from the book dynamite and Davey Davey continued to wrestle sporadically. He played a minor role as Kurt Angle's tag team partner against Chris Jericho in China on the 21st of February edition of raw in Atlanta, Georgia, before flying to Tennessee for the following day, SmackDown taping. Bulldog showed up at the Nashville arena in an alarming state. 
Bruce Pritchard and Jim Ross sat Davy down in a private locker room. Davy drooled and slurred his words as he's denied having a problem, but Bruce had been there himself and could see the signs easily. And Jim still carried the weight of his final conversations with Brian Pillman around with him in which Pillman had vehemently denied having problems. They had seen and heard it all in their combined decades in the poisoned industry. Speaking on behalf of Vince, Bruce and Jim assured Davey that his job would be there waiting for him when he returned healthy. Okay. Davey accepted. I'll go to rehab back in Canada after this tour is done. And Bruce said, no, you got to go tonight. You got to go right now. They got Davey to the airport and on a flight directly back to Atlanta, where he's taken straight to the Talbot recovery center. And he's admitted into a four month treatment program for addiction to painkillers, sleeping pills, morphine, and muscle relaxers. God, this is, uh, quite a circumstance. Do you remember this meeting with, uh, you and yeah. Bruce, Davey? Yeah, absolutely. And, and there was no margin for error for us. We had a plan, you know, Bruce and I can, after consulting with Vince, how do you want to handle this? We'll, we'll take care of it, but you, we got to know what you, what you want, Vince. And with this one, his, his, uh, potential reoccurring star to be healthy. Right. And, uh, so that's why when Davey said, I'll go after this tour is over. Well, no, uh, you're going to separate from your drugs. You're not going to take them with you. They're not going to have them with you. You're not going to, you don't need to get high for another two or three days and then go to rehab. This is it. You're going tonight or you're not going. And I think, uh, you know, Davey's sense of, uh, family responsibilities came uh, ab abundantly clear. He knew that now I have, I'm back against the wall. I can't negotiate out of this deal. I can't, uh, I can't not do it. So, uh, cause I was a little skeptical. I I'm not so sure that I believed it to, yeah, that he was going to say, okay, let's go do it. Cause uh, the Nile is such a huge part of addiction. Yeah. And, and uh, as we have grown to know, so, uh, it was, it was, a, a, a very stern serious meeting and uh you know and again let's don't forget too that davy because of his sense of humor and his tenure and all that stuff plus his skills uh at one point in time uh you know he he just he had a he, he just couldn't he couldn't shake it man just couldn't shake it and you can't if you go to if you have a, a scenario where you know that a talent has is uh compromised and that talent inadvertently hurts somebody in a match. The lawsuit on that by the in injured individual would be magnified. It would be huge. So you can't take a gamble on it. You can't do it. And, uh, you just, you, you, you take the bat out of your own hands, so to speak. So, uh, I was a little surprised that Davey took, uh, took the offer and the requirement. And so. But I thought that, well, look, maybe this is going to work. If it does great. It's not just the fact you get a talent back that you could utilize, uh, cause we weren't overly, overly over in depth, depth with, uh, over talent. But the main thing, quite frankly, if you talk, look at it as a human being, maybe you're helping this guy save his life. Right. And that was the goal is to get him healthy. If we got him healthy, then a lot of good things could happen, which we tried to communicate to him. Well, he returns, he comes back and, uh, he has one last small bit of glory in the spotlight in front of his home country. It's the insurrection pay-per-view in London in May of 2000. Uh, he defeats crash Holly for the hardcore title, but he, he loses it a few days later. His final televised match is against Eddie Guerrero on an episode of Sunday night heat. Eddie would defend the European title to a double DQ and, uh, and see, they're the, still trying to take care of Davey. They are the finish itself would be, uh, indicative that we got faith. This guy's going to be okay. So we yeah. don't need a clean finish. And Vince went along with that. So Vince obviously still had hope that, uh, Davey would be able to kick out. Well, I have hope that you guys will try AG one. My wife started me on athletic greens, right? At the start of the pandemic, she wanted to optimize our immune system. And you might be asking yourself, Hey, what is this stuff? We see that scooper right there. Well, with one delicious scoop of AG one, 
you're going to be absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your focus, your recovery, your aging, all of your things. And it's also lifestyle friendly. Whether you're trying to eat keto or paleo or vegan or dairy or gluten-free, has less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, no artificial anything, and it still tastes good. It's going to support better sleep quality and recovery, better mental clarity and alertness. And we look at it as almost like an investment in your all-in-one nutritional insurance. Don't just take Jim's word for it. Don't just take Conrad's word for it. Go check it out, man. 7,000 five-star reviews. Unheard of. It, it, it's crazy to think. I couldn't tell you the last time I left a review. It has to be over-the-top crazy awesome for me to go out of my way, figure out where to leave it, type it up, create an account, click send, it has wowed over 7,000 people, not one star, not two star, not three star, not four star, Dave Meltzer's favorite five star affair. And right now it's time to reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health and to make it easy. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash JR. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash JR to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. That's athleticgreens.com forward slash JR. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Help you. And I, I tell you the, the it is so simple. I mean, it's, it's idiot proof. It is. It's idiot proof. So, and it helps you get healthier. And, and I just think it's just a no brainer. This is a great product folks. You're going to get a year's supply for free. That's right. That's a hell of a deal. I don't care what you're buying. No doubt. So, uh, give it a, give it a shot. A lot of guys are using it. I know a lot of the wrestlers use it because it's a, it's a quick startup. It's a quick way to get your motor started in the morning. With that one scoop, one scoop does everything. Davey's final match with the WWF. This is directly from the book, by the way, uh, dynamite and Davey. Uh, we're talking about the last couple of matches from Davey's career. Davey's final WWF match was of course in Calgary. He stumbled to victory, stumbled to victory over at mixed martial artist and former stampede comrade, Steve Blackman and a house show on May 27th. It was painful for the Calgary wrestling goers to watch one of their favorite sons, in such disarray with Davey continually failing to get Blackman off the ground for his signature power moves, a wired and incoherent Davey turned up late in Edmonton for the following night show and agents, Jack Lanza and Tony Gurria removed him from the card and sent him home. That was a phone call to Jr. His what do you want us to do? Send him home. Yeah, we're done. I, I can't fix it. And we can't put him in a ring impaired. That's not, I don't know. I can't remember who I, who, I, who I even had him booked with at that point, Steve Blackman. And certainly Blackman could take care of himself. But sometimes when you give your body up and you trust somebody, uh, it, it could be very dangerous. Yeah. So uh, that's where we were. And then I remember Lanza called me. Uh, Davies messed up. He's, hot, he's screwed up. He's slurring his speech, et cetera, et cetera. So well, we can't put him in the ring. And I don't want him to hang around the locker room all day. Send him home. We'll take off. We'll, we'll go from there with what's the next step is going to be. But uh, Davy's life was unraveling and his personal life was unraveling. You know, I didn't, I didn't remember that he had a girlfriend and by the by, she was, uh, uh, the former wife of the bull of, uh, who's, who's, who's she married to? Uh, we had that on our sheet here. Uh, you know, for him and Diana to get divorced was a major deal. Oh, oh, his girlfriend is, is Andrea, the estranged wife of Bruce Hart, Bruce Hart. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the circle is unbroken. Yeah. You know, Mary, find a nice girl that works at uh, Dunkin' Donuts, marry a barista, except not that looks like Tony Schiavone. Have you seen Schiavone's hair lately? My God. It's uh it's out of control. 
yeah, two earrings, two tattoos, and that long hair. He's, he's, he's having a revival of his uh, youth, youthful senses, I think. But he did I, a hell of a job on Saturday night, I'll tell you that. I texted his daughter uh, last Wednesday during TV, and I said, we're going to have to do something about this hair. I mean, Tony Schiavone's hair is just out of control. He's got a Kentucky waterfall at this point. <laughs> The opponent, I think on May 28th here in Edmonton was probably going to be Steve Blackman in this era. You usually have the same guys working together through the loop. So for instance, in Calgary, you had Dean Malenko working with crash Holly. They did the same thing. in uh, in Edmonton, uh, that was probably going to be the deal. I mean, you, you had Kane working with boss man in Calgary. It was Kane and boss man in Edmonton, but when bulldog gets pulled off of this card in Edmonton, so does Steve Blackman. And it's a shame because there's over 14,500 fans there. And that's all she wrote. As we said, Tony Gurria and Jack Lanza are going to send him home. And in, in the book here, it's, it's written his last run was over and he had failed to get to the dream of sharing a ring with Harry, man. You want to talk about something that would have been really, really cool. Yeah. I know you and I both think a lot of Harry Smith, Davy boy Smith jr. Yes, sir. I mean, just a, a heck of a performer, a heck of a talent, a heck of a great guy. He's a damn monster. Let me tell you what he is. He's a, he's a self-made monster his, with his diet, his training methods, uh, what he does. He looks great. Uh, he's a, he's so focused. I'm really proud of this young man because, you know, I don't want to say he didn't have a father in his life, but he didn't have the father that he deserved in his life for most of it, in my opinion. And I don't. I don't want to get anybody angry at me for saying that, but, uh, this kid has really got a great potential. I wish he was an AEW. I think he would be a great, uh, resource for anybody that, that, uh, got, because you know, he's going to stay healthy or at least you hope he's got a good chance at it, but he's big and strong and athletic. And I don't know anybody his age that loves wrestling any more than, uh, than Harry Smith. And I, uh, always will be in his corner, quite frankly. I will too. Can't wait to see what he does next. Uh, I think there's still, uh, a lot of life in front of his in-ring career. Can't wait to see how it all shakes out. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, the, the ultimate end of the road here for the British bulldog after Lanza and Gurria send him home. Do you go tell Vince, are you the one who makes the call to let him know, or what's the process? I probably had a conversation with Vince about that. Yeah, of course. Uh, I didn't call Vince and say, well, what do you want me to do? Right. Uh, I, I knew what to do. He, he doesn't need to stay in the locker room impaired, uh, period. And much less get in the ring with somebody and have their life in his hands while he's impaired. It made no sense. It was yeah, totally illogical. So I think I made the only decision I could make that made sense that all that, uh, kind of makes comes together, but, uh, it affected is, uh, you know, it's, it's just a sad thing because we, we tried to elbow in Conrad, how great a talent Davy boy Smith was and athletically speaking. And, you know, like I said, Cornette had hit the nail on the head. I mean, he's, he was absolutely ter- tremendous talent, but he couldn't, he couldn't beat that one opponent. And he didn't beat that one opponent. And finally that one opponent beat his ass and killed him. So uh, such a shame, man. He, he, uh, he's in a bad place at the time. He's, uh, going to divorce Diana and, and be released from the company here. He's going to enter in another Atlanta drug rehab clinic to treat his prescription to opiate painkillers. Uh, I guess as the story goes, he became depended on these after falling on that trap door in WCW, he goes into retirement, but he starts training for a comeback and wrestles a few tag matches with his son, Harry in the May of 02 in the weeks leading up to his death and ultimately suffers a heart attack on vacation in British Columbia with his girlfriend, Andrea, who was the estranged wife of Bruce Hart. This happens on May 18th, 2002. He's just 39 years old. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Conrad unbelievable 39. Just, he shouldn't, he hadn't even hit the, he hadn't hit the exact peak. I know he had great matches, yeah. but at 39, you got some, there's some fuel left in the tank. Oh, no doubt. 
he, uh, he winds up going into the hall of fame in 2020, a well-deserved accolade. He was one of my favorites as a kid, but now when you go back and you revisit all the opportunities he had and how, unfortunately, man, that addiction just got a hold of him. It's a cautionary tale. Yeah. I think his legacy will probably forever be defined by SummerSlam 92. Without a doubt, Kyle, you're a good point. And, and certainly his tag run with dynamite. And by the way, if you never saw those guys, maybe if you're fandom, maybe you're more of an attitude era guy and you didn't see him and dynamite kid go out of your way to see it. Yeah. It was so far ahead of its time. I mean, they were a team that could be wrestling on Wednesday. Yeah. No kidding. Just a phenomenal yeah. pairing. Their, sty- their style would, 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 uh, hold water today. Yes. Without a doubt, in any territory, in any presentation, uh, they were that good, that innovative, that new and fresh. And, uh, yeah, if you get a chance, that take a few minutes out of your day, you know, 10 minutes and go back and find some bulldog, uh, British bulldog, uh, matches. You're going to be sh- shocked because they did a lot of things that were influential, uh, to a lot of talents that we're seeing on television today. Uh, they did a lot of things, Conrad, that were, you know, are being utilized in, in today's pro wrestling world. So they were very innovative and they were very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Influential. Yes. Uh, to, to a lot of younger talents. Again, remember that some of these cats today that, uh, were kids when the bulldogs were in their, in their top form, uh, they they, they, they took that with them. Uh, they barred things. They amended and they, uh, you know, it just was a, they were very influential in that regard. I think more than people are given credit for, quite frankly. But well, I want to give a little credit to, uh, to some of our listeners. They came up with some great questions for us. I don't think there's any way we'll get to all of them. Let's bounce around a little bit. Francis Reyes wants to know, why do you think British bulldog never got a shot as a world champion? What was missing to give him the, the title for even a short reign? Well, Francis, we've talked about that reliability. He, he, he had nothing to do with his bell to bell skills, right? Had everything to do with his battle with drugs and alcohol. You can't go to the post. You can't go to the very, very top unless you're a hundred percent sure that the talent you're pushing is reliable. And unfortunately, as we have discussed here and try to do it in a very courteous professional way. That wasn't Davey at that time. He just, so there was no, I don't think there's ever any strong consideration for any length of time that uh, Davey was uh, going to be okay. And it was worth the gamble to make him your champ. Adam Leeson has a great question. Bulldog is the wrestler that made me fall in love with wrestling. Who was Jim Ross's? Oh, easy. Danny Hodge. Well, the NWA junior heavyweight champion, uh, Olympian and you know, Hodge never lost an amateur match. Hell, I think his senior year at OU, Oklahoma University, he didn't even get taken off his feet. So he was on TV every week. He had great exposure. And, uh, and he was, when I, when I started riding with him in 74, uh, it was like riding with Mickey Mantle because he's the guy that I grew Mantle on baseball, of course, in Oakley. Uh, and certainly, uh, Hodge was my guy. Oklahoma guy, Perry, Oklahoma, home of, home of, uh, Jake Hager. So, uh, I, I, uh, Hodge is my guy and he still is. And it's always will be. I have one of my favorite pictures that somebody took of Hodge and I at, uh, in Perry at the unveiling of the Danny Hodge trophy, a uh, big life size trophy. And he, I was there with him when they unveil, unveiled it. I was so tickled to be a part of that deal. And, uh, Danny Hodge nickname. I, I got, I assembled a few nicknames along the way. Conrad er, Ernie lad called me the junk food dog. Uh, and I always got to cut a kick out of that one. And, uh, Hodge called me tiger. No idea why a hey, tiger. He has a soft baby voice. Hey, tiger. Are you going to drive? Yes, Danny. I'm going to drive. <laughs> I'll drive all 300. Fucking miles of it because he had that trick, you know, he would, he would drive for about 10 minutes. till he fell asleep in the, in the, in the cat, the co-captain's chair, shotgun chair. 
And then he'd let the gravels hit the car and then you'd wake up scared as hell. And he'd be slapping himself in the face, working me all along. Right. But I didn't know that. So then I, we would switch seats. I'd get out, go around, sit back down, all flustered, pissed off. But how can you get pissed off at your hero? Yeah. You can't, you can't just shut up and drive. Especially when he'll just crush your hand or your head or whatever else. Yeah. <laughs> he got, he got pissed. I bought a new car, a new Pontiac, uh, two door. I think it was a grand am or something, something, something am. And, uh, it had a cruise, had a cruise control on it and he was doing some driving in the daylight and he got pissed off. He couldn't make the cruise control work. So he just broke the son of a bitch. Oh, oh yeah. So well, there's uh, that. Yeah. Thank God it's still under warranty. <laughs> and was I mad at Danny Hodge? No, he had my heart and, and he also had my respect because of his abnormal strength, but thank God he didn't have a mean bone in his body. It, the rest of the business would have been a whole lot different place. If he had if Danny Hodge had been a bully and thank God he wasn't. Adam Leeson has another follow-up question. Was there anything that made British wrestlers different to Americans? Yeah, they're, they're in counters. Yeah. Submissions escapes, uh, just a fundamental, uh, soundness of what they did in a unique way. A counter is a counter, but the British guys seem to have a, a zillion ways to escape something. And, uh, it was perpetual motion and it was fun to watch quite frankly. So, uh, yeah, they, they're, they're in ring style, especially in the counters and the submission attempts and so forth. Uh, come to mind. I'm really excited to ask you uh, about this one. Cause you're going to have to think here. Dave McClay wants to know where does British bulldog rank on your list of all time. Great wrestlers from the UK. Oh, from the UK, probably top 10. Yeah. Yeah. Probably in the top, probably in the top 10. Uh, I, I, I started following the, you know, I liked to looked at a lot of the old ITV world sport tapes when I was getting ready to do some work for them. Uh, I mean, that was a star maker. It's like being on network television in America in, in a, in a prime time slot. You couldn't ask for a better deal. So I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I, their, their style was different. Their, the feel was different and it was fun to watch. Uh, one last one. This one comes to us from Nick, the jeans, the hoodie, the ring music, it all changed in 99. Was it a mistake to repackage him so much all at once, or was it necessary for the attitude era? I think that we wanted to freshen, kept looking for ways. You notice Davey kept getting opportunity after opportunity. And that was simply because he had great talent and we knew that he could essentially one of those guys could go out there and have a great match with anybody. Uh, so I don't know if it was too much too soon. I think the changes were needed. And so then it would be certainly argumentative and, and subjective. Did they need to become all at once? Maybe not. You could make an argument that it was too much too soon. Uh, I didn't think so. I thought he needed a, a, a remodeling as uh Brucey would say, he needed a new coat of paint. Yeah, he did. I, I think I also said that at one time, Conrad, Bruce steals a lot of my shit. You know that. Well, he says it backwards. He says paint of coat. <laughs> well, that's well, whatever. <laughs> Hey, what, do you think of, you, what do you think of your boy, Jeff Jarrett's performance on Saturday night? I, I don't know. I mean, he looks somehow physically better than ever. The dude has abs. Yeah. I, I knew as soon as the bell rang, I know who's not taking the pin old double J, uh, his shoulders ain't touching the canvas and they didn't Jay lethal <laughs> though, is living his best life. Yeah. July 31st. He wrestles Ric Flair, November 19th. He wrestles sting. And as we're talking this Sunday, he's wrestling Ricky, the dragon steamboat, uh, the, the little wrestling fan and Jay lethal is living out his lifelong dream. Oh, man. He's loving it, man. It gotta be any, and look, it's well-deserved. Yes. Jay, Jay lethal is a great soldier. Yes. He's very talented. And, uh, I hope he, uh, I hope he has a great year in 2023. I can't see any boundaries. Why he wouldn't he, not knocking on wood here. He stays healthy. Uh, He's set for a real good year. He's a hell of a talent, a hell of a talent. And like you said, as a fan, as fanboy Jay lethal, so to speak, yes. uh, he's living his dream, man. Think about that player. Yeah. Really sting. Yeah. So, uh, now I, steamboat. I, this weekend steamboat oh, that, yeah. that's available right now, by the way, if you're able to get to Dorton arena, 
you're going to see uh, the rock and roll express and the briscoes and the main event is FTR and Ricky, the dragon steamboat taking on Brock Anderson, black machismo, AKA J lethal and a mystery opponent or mystery partner in that case, I guess. Uh, that's the main event. It's going to be uh, something for everybody, and it's happening at the Dorton Arena this Sunday. So be sure. And to we're happy them. to promote these events, Conrad. I think that's one thing about this show is we don't show any bias on who gets a little media stretch. Oh, uh, you know, we hope it does great. Uh, it's like we mentioned, Russell Kate. Hey, look, they didn't book me. I'm not mad about it. I'll just be home sure. watching football. <laughs> Well, we hope everybody has fun at WrestleCade. We, you and I, here's what we have in common amongst a lot of other things. We're wrestling fans. Yep. And if there's wrestling out there, we want you to enjoy it. And we hope you'll enjoy next week's show. We're going to talk about the growth of WWE developmental. We'll talk about why you push to build a developmental program for the company, the ups and downs of putting it together, OVW, all the various other promotions, your time briefly working in NXT and so much more. And we hope you guys have dug today's show. We hope you'll throw us a like, hit the subscribe button, leave us a five-star review if you think we've earned it. We're right. very active on Twitter. He's at JR's BBQ. I am at Hey Hey, it's Conrad. Uh, but you can catch us uh, anywhere when you're asking questions about the show at JR Grilling. That's the code for Twitter and Instagram. Over on Facebook, it's just plain old Grilling JR. Uh, our Instagram is Jim Ross BBQ. Uh, and of course our, our Facebook is Jim Ross BBQ. So check us out, man. And, and be sure while you're checking things out to recommend our YouTube grilling Jr on youtube.com is where you want to go. If you've got a wrestling fan in your life or you think would dig the show, but maybe they're a little, they find our run times a little daunting. Give them a little bite size, give them a little appetizer, give them a little snack, send them over to grilling Jr on youtube.com. And right now. Uh, as you're listening to this, it's Thanksgiving. So tomorrow is black Friday. And if I had to bet, there's probably some good deals to be had at jrsbbq.com. We got the JR's red ass hot sauce. Selling like crazy Conrad. We we're three and a half times over our projections. I love it on orders. Yeah. It's been amazing. And we're getting such great feedback from the fans that are trying it. They wanted a hot sauce. So brother, brother. This is hot and, uh, it's in stock. Uh, it's exceeding our expectations and I thank everybody for trying it, but it's a, it's a help. It's a new product. It's a good product. It's clean. It's got a lot of flavor like Conrad, a lot of flavor in that big body. So, uh, we're, uh, I'm very pleased with how that's evolved. And Steven link that works for me and did a great job in that. And we got a lot of, we have new items coming, adding. We're going to add new items to our repertoire, uh, at right here in the perfect time for the holiday. So I hope you'll consider our little shop, uh, a potential stop for your holidays, your, your stocking stuffers and all those things. we you know, we appreciate your business. And I think we've proven that we have a very good product that we are encourage you to try. The all purpose seasoning is my standout. I use it regularly. Uh, all my friends love the Chipotle ketchup. Almost everybody I know who's put on your main event mustard really loves it. Of course, there's still the OG opportunity. You got the original barbecue sauce and the hot barbecue sauce, but this is a product that was born out of this show. Every now and again, red ice Jr. rears his head here on the podcast. <laughs> we turned it into a hot sauce. Go check it out right now. It's jrsbbq.com. It is the perfect stocking stuffer and uh, something for the wrestling fan in your life, just in time for the holiday. That's jrsbbq.com. And Hey, let me ask you this. What if you picked up your phone this weekend and one of your favorite podcast hosts was on the other line? That'd be pretty cool, huh? Well, ad free shows is making it happen. And it starts back this black Friday tomorrow, sign up for an annual ad free shows.com membership at any level and get a personal phone call from the person of your choosing. That's right. Pick your favorite host. They'll give you a ring. So ring in black Friday with this exclusive offer and spend the next year and hopefully much longer with us over at adfreeshows.com. It starts Friday at midnight. It's going to go through Monday at midnight Eastern. And that happens when you sign up for any annual membership at adfreeshows.com and keep an eye on social media because we got lots of other cool stuff. We're going to be rolling out over the weekend, including some announcements about the next top guy weekend. And if you've never joined us for one of those. You got to, uh, there's so much bonus content more than you can shake a stick at over at adfreeshows.com. Hope you'll check it out. And I'm looking forward to talking about developmental tomorrow. And I hope, yeah. uh, 
you had a great Thanksgiving today, Jim, and, and all of our listeners do too. The holiday season, man, it's here. There's nothing like, uh, th there's nothing that says Thanksgiving more than O'Hare airport. <laughs> I have a very nice uh, housekeeper and she and her daughter are cooking me Thanksgiving dinner. I was informed today. Well, how about that? And they're going to deliver awesome. it. And, uh, she that. knows the menu. I want, I want cornbread dressing. And there's a great recipe from Conrad's mama that you can find on my timeline. Conrad's probably got on his timeline too. But if you're looking for that fail safe, original, authentic cornbread dressing recipe, check it out. And look, there's another holiday coming up. You still got time to get your game together and have cornbread dressing for Christmas. Not a bad idea. Yeah. My mama's recipe. You've heard Jim brag about it here on the show. Butter. It's posted right now at jr grilling and of course at jr's bbq on twitter uh we're out of time folks we greatly appreciate you spending time with us today on turkey day with us we'll be back next week right here on grilling jr with the voice of wrestling mr jim ross thank you very much conrad i'm very grateful to have you in my life i'm, I'm grateful to have our audience that tunes in so loyally and the support the fans give me hey look i'm not going to be on 70 somebody point that out on uh on Twitter. Well, he's 70. So he's going to make some mistakes. I'll put my announced game up against anybody's period. End of story as Ernie Ladd would say case closed. And if you don't feel that way about your own work, no matter what you do, uh, you lessen your chances to be successful. And I, I'm not going to take that risk. I want to, I want to, I still want to do what I do. I love what I do. And my best work is yet to come guaranteed. So thanks very much, Conrad. I love you, buddy. Have a good Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, understand what that holiday is about. You might even want to hug somebody you love. That might be different. So uh, I know I missed my what my Jan. Thanksgiving was her time to shine, baby, and she did every single time. Where I'd have, I'd have people calling, "Hey, you got any guests for Thanksgiving coming over? I'll bang a pie." <laughs> so or whatever. But I, I, so many happy memories about Thanksgiving, and I hope that you use today. And this weekend to make those memories for your own. Thanks, everybody. We'll sad. We'll see you next week right here on Grill and JR.